in the next 20 uh, minutes, I will touch on uh, how it all started for me, how it led me to design, um, share some honest reflections from my years of community-based research, service design, and civic engagement, touch up on how building and maintaining a learning organization culture will guide your pathway to success as a team, and leave you with some thoughts around key tools I have found useful along the way in hopes that it would inspire and energize your, the rest of your day and your plans uh, for today. So my story is, is that of a immigrant uh, woman, as many of your clients and maybe even some of you today coming to Canada, I anticipated my settlement journey will not be necessarily smooth or simple, but I also did not expect it to be as difficult uh, and painful as it turned out to be. Uh, nothing seemed to be getting easier every year with every development, every milestone. I faced new set of complications, new barriers were raised. As a newcomer young professional, I was deemed not experienced enough, not Canadian enough. And when I became a new mom, there was never enough support. And as a working mom, it became even more difficult. Um, even every uphill battle led to another steeper path. And the worst part was that I was very much aware that I was one of the lucky ones. And I remain aware uh, of the areas where I have privilege and it, and it weighed on me because I felt terrible most of the time that I do not have the capacity to do anything for or about anyone else. So I accepted the status quo and simply kept waiting on the world to change. But as I patiently and sometimes even passively, I would say waited, I did start noticing change. It was not necessarily the change I wanted to see or wished for, but nevertheless, it was happening. Um, I witnessed it over time and maybe it was all internal, maybe some external and probably, and more probably a mix of both, but I was becoming more aware of the patterns, signs and signals of change especially within the context of community building and, um, uh, sorry, yeah, community engagement and community building. And if I look at the, like, you know, scientific term of what social change is, sociologists define it as changes in human interaction and relationships that transform cultural and, and social institutions. According to them, these changes occur over, occur over time and often have profound long-term consequences for society. And I just realized I concur with that definition uh, because I found and I witnessed social change and transformation of people, mindsets, culture, and even society. But it was happening in certain settings and conditions and were specific to a series or set of connected events. It was happening mainly in or through spaces of interaction and exposure to different opinions and life experiences other than our own. In environments where active and respectful listening was mindfully designed and practiced, safe and brave spaces that allowed no, judgmental, no judgment and encouraged openness and curiosity. And in instances where I saw social change in particular soar and innovation soar, it didn't just stop at acceptance, it came in conversation that facilitated a push and a pull that asked participants to give and take. And as I became more aware of it, I found myself or I found my way into design and design for social change and innovation. And what interested me the most and motivated me the most to even study this further is the collective power to influence social change. And while I came to accept that change is constant, I also came to realize that I do not have to accept that I am powerless in its wake. It is the extent to which I can care about the direction social change that I can in fact try to shape it and help to create the kind of change I do wish to see in the world. So it no longer became a matter of will change come or not, it became a question of what change do I wish to see in the world and what role can I play to shape it. The deeper, dive, the deeper I dived into systems change and social innovation, the more I studied. Um, and I found that success in this arena is not marked by the production of an object or the completion of a project or a funding contract or agreement, but through extensive observation, 
feedback and, and assessment over the long haul. I also found that collaboration is a fundamental driver of design. Design happens collaboratively, not as an individual act or of a craft or an art making. As designers choose their partners, allies, and collaborators, they also have the opportunity to choose the voiceless, those who have critical insights about human problems and needs, the human problems and needs that we are actually trying to solve, and that they include the marginalized whose perspectives are critical to make change and to make real change for that, for that matter. They should not only include those voices, but honor the leadership and knowledge they bring. Rather than presuming leadership by default, designers for social impact facilitate the leadership of others as a condition of engagement. In design, the problem solver in me really thrived in opportunities to interrogate real world systems and find answers. More questions, more sense making, more clarity and comfort in Socratic and iterative inquiry and navigating complexity. It is through the openness to the messy inconveniences of human existence that I have found better and smarter levers and opportunities for change and simpler solutions-based innovations. I've also found that success in social design and achieving lasting impact requires getting very comfortable with failure. It is a fundamental asset to design. Designs that fail bring knowledge and insight in their wake. Designs that embrace failure are better and are better able to recognize the power of learning that comes when people come together to take risks, listen to one another, try something completely new, and are willing to learn from their mistakes. And just like change is constant, failure is inevitable. Although it is uncomfortable and it can be a super, it can be the best super catalyst in the long run. I personally lost count of my failures at the moment, but I became much more successful at failing. Um, I always say to youth and women I work with in community ship, I'm the most successful failure you will meet today. And my failures are the best thing I can offer to set up, to set you up for success. So as Axel uh, uh, shared earlier, the topics of focus for, your, for you today is around community-based research, knowledge mobilization, and social action. And many of you today have probably been doing this for years now and have become experts at it. And there's, and there's a lot of academia and many highly recognized authors out there today uh, who are offering theories and principles around those topics. So I will keep it simple and stick to the reflections uh, from my humble lived experience. On community-based research, I really do find that they do hold the key to the solutions needed. Engaging and involving them never fails. It truly never failed me. And it really comes down to holding close the principle of nothing about us without us. Knowledge mobilization, <laughs> it's quite a fancy word. I've seen it used a lot, but it really all comes down to facilitating and curating opportunities for connection and exchange of thought, ideas, stories, human connection and interaction in, is a key driver for successfully successfully and sustainably mobilizing knowledge. You don't even need to hold any knowledge to mobilize it. Just be the keen facilitator that keeps it flowing and moving. And when it comes to social action in whichever phase or form, it requires for you to be brave. Be brave to share, voice, learn, fall, fail, get up, move on. It all comes down to finding that inner courage and that was a huge learning curve for me personally. Your strategic focus in the next couple of years is centered around client voices. And together as a team, you are embarking on an amazing journey to reimagining the healthcare system, find and identify promising practices and support highly to support highly prioritized populations that and influence systems change, explore strategies that will address social determinants that include problems we all face today as access to affordable housing and cross uh, uh, sectoral collaboration and do your part in alleviating disparities in communities through mental health, food security, education, and social development for children and youth. So not 
everyone on the call today may consider themselves as a designer, but congratulations, your strategic plan pretty much confirms that you are. And if you still think you are not, you are very well on your way to become one. Becoming a designer all starts with awareness, to basically become more self-aware, to become more aware of who is leading change around you, who is and who gets to participate in the conversation and process around change, who claims and gives the credit for those ideas, and how do you assess success in the near and long term. When using design thinking, you cannot simply separate from the communities you are trying to understand. You cannot go into the community to observe and then leave to go and create a solution. Equity-centered community design focuses on dismantling systemic oppression, bringing down barriers, and creating solutions to achieve equity for all. Success is very much dependent on the ability of you, the designer, that is currently working within the system to include others in ways big and small and to recognize that the voices of the defranchised and marginalized are deserving, even when their ideas diverge from and seek to change the processes in which designers themselves are most confidently entrenched. In other words, designers must seek change even in themselves. They must seek critical feedback even of themselves. There, therein only lies real change. Finding spaces where change is necessary and making it possible is the persistent challenge of designers working towards social impact. And I hope more designers and yourselves included accept the challenge and define the field for the next generations to come. Now, while personal mastery is very much what I have been alluding to and is a key component for success, you're not totally alone in this journey. You're part of a team and an organization that values a learning culture. The term learning organizations was coined through the work and research of Peter Senge, who describes a learning organization as a group of people working together collectively to enhance their capacity to create results they really care about. The concept of learning organization became popular through his book, The Fifth Discipline, where, the proposed, where he proposed that the following five characteristics to which I see from your plan and understood in conversation with Axel that they are pretty much in place at your organization. I won't go through them, but I do recommend that you read the book if you haven't and if you're not familiar uh, with the terms and the work of Peter. But as you prepare for today and moving forward with your strategic plan, I felt it was important to bring to your attention or remind those who are familiar with this book of the way the, of the 11 laws of the fifth discipline. And by the way, fifth discipline uh, for, for, for his thought and work is systems change. So it's, that, that's just if you're wondering what the fifth discipline really is. Uh, so just keep them in the back of your mind and uh, as you work through your way today. And in fact, many of them are just really sensible conclusions you may be already familiar with anyway. Um, I'll, I'll quickly read them out, and I just want you to note while, we are, while, while I'm doing so, the ones that really uh, sit well with you or things that you think that you actually need to take, you need, you need to work harder with as you work through. Today's problems come from yesterday's solutions. The harder you push, the harder the system pushes back. Behavior, better, behavior grows better before it grows worse. The easy way out leads back in. The cure can be worse than the disease. Faster is slower. Cause and effect are not closely related in time and space. Small changes can produce big results, but the areas of highest leverage are often least obvious. You can have your cake and eat it too, just not all at once. Dividing an elephant in half does not produce two small elephants. And gosh, I wish I, I should, we should start quoting this in proposals for funders. And there is, and finally, the last one is there is no blame. Again, these are the 11 laws that I felt would very much kind of set you in the mood as you work through your day to day. Think about them, keep them at the back of your head 
because you are coming uh, to that, uh, you're, you're, you're embarking on that journey for design journey. Um, and the work that you do is really important. And just finally, I wanted to offer a quick review of some of my favorite design tools in hopes to get your creative juices flowing for the day. Your reflective uh, uh, mind as well, uh, um, uh, more awake uh, uh, while we move. So you may be familiar with many of them. So I'm hoping you find the tool review useful as you work towards uh, the rest of your day and your work plans and team goals. The iterative inquiry method serves as a guiding investigative tool and a reminder that truth is not the starting, but rather the end point of an inquiry. Successive iterations yield to a great understanding and more closely approximate the nature of the whole. Think of it more as a process for purposeful curiosity. The iceberg model, a reminder for all of us that what we see is usually just the tip of a much bigger mass under the surface of it all. Layer what you see to find efficient levers and better opportunities to tackle and address systemic change. If you're centering client voices, then make sure you are accurately collecting, noting, and documenting the experiences to better understand their journey, their needs, and find ways to better assess and evaluate the impact of your work in their lives. You're working with and parallel to many actors in the bigger, oops, sorry, in the bigger system and grand scheme of things that you seek to address. So map your actor networks, understand the relationships as you seek possibilities. Use causal loops to visualize and understand the drivers and influencers. Don't underestimate the power of laying out the mechanisms to find ways to affect change and be bold and realistic in stating the variables that influence one another from root cause to visible outcomes. Remember that getting familiar and comfortable with complexity of, of the complexity of it all, of everything you're collecting, of everything you're noting, will lead you to smarter solutions, better outcomes and la more lasting impact. So bon voyage, Team Access Alliance, and I thank you for your kind listening. Thank you for the work that you do. And thank you for inviting me to share my passion for design with you 